to this, folks, and you think it's just, give me a five-minute condensed version of ICT. Make it easy for me so I can go out there and blow my count because that's what you're asking for. Give me another shortcut excuse for me to go out there and try to do something I'm ill-prepared to do, but we'll call it fucking skill if I'm lucky. I know it doesn't sound good sometimes hearing it like that way, but folks, listen, that's just exactly what I needed to hear when I was coming up. There was nobody to do it. I didn't know nobody that had the excuse to do not do this because this is what will happen. I was going through it myself. I was a poster child for fucking blown accounts, feeling fearful of this, doubting myself, all that stuff. Do you see those characteristics in me today? Do you hear them in me today? Fuck no. I'm always referred to as the most arrogant fucking pompous prick there is in trading. Because I know my shit will work. I know when it will work. That's a level of confidence that you just can't get in a book. You can't go to a workshop. A guru can't teach that to you. You earn that shit. You earn it. You acquire it through sweat, work, diligent approach to studying, adhering to fucking rules, and abstaining from things that are wasteful, time-consuming, fucking negative horseshit. You cut all that stuff out. If you're listening to me today, you're on the right fucking path. You're doing that very thing. So many people are still sleeping in because they got fucking drunk last night. Some of you are probably hung over listening to this thinking, shit, I wish I wouldn't have been fucking so hung over. This would have been a better space. <laughs> what you do on your weekends tells the story of your future. And that's the truth. Your free time away from the man, the slave shop, the sweat shop, the cubicle across from fucking Carl. When everybody else just wants to sit back and chill, give me my fucking cores, give me my sports teams, give me my barbecues, a bag of fucking trips, and just don't bother me for a couple of days because Monday's coming again. That's not you. That's not you. You're listening to some fucking ranting, raving motherfucker telling you what you need to do and what not to do on a Saturday because you have shit to do. You have things that you want to get accomplished before you lay down for the last time. You have places to be and you have to make assurities that you're going to be able to afford things for you and your family. So you're sacrificing your time. You're investing your time in yourself, in your future self, in your family's future to learn and acquire a skill set from someone that's proving it to you globally, not just independently through my own actions. And you're seeing value because you didn't have to swipe a credit card. You didn't have to make a PayPal payment. There's no two week trial. There's no coupon codes here. It's just show the fuck up, show up, take notes. That's it. I'm not asking anything of you, but just do the work. The things that you want to have out of life, this can deliver it for some of you. Not all of you, some of you, because not all of you are going to be able to do the things that are required. You haven't overcome your adversities. You didn't look at that adversity as an objective to overcome. And you need to do that initially in the beginning stages. And anytime a new adversity creeps in, whether it be in trading or any other venture that you do in life, you have to immediately go after it. You have to single-handedly stomp its ass. Everything you, you do is a decision. You need to ask yourself before you do it, how is this decision going to impact me? Not just today. How is it going to impact me for the coming week, coming month, coming year? How is it going to affect me as a person of character, of principle, is this a waste of my fucking time? Am I wasting my time? Am I putting any waste of time in this venture or 
providing time to someone that's not going to yield me a return on my, in my investment. If you're not getting something out of that, don't do it. Don't feel bad about it either. Don't even apologize. Just say, I don't have time for this. I got to go. What a rude ass motherfucker. Fuck off. You don't have to say it verbally. Wipe your feet off and leave them right where they're standing. Because the enemy likes to creep in and steal time. Cloud your mind. You won't see the opportunities in front of you. Which is why he brings adversity. And adversities are just simply opportunities for you to exercise what you're already growing stronger in doing. Which is overcoming. Trading is overcoming uncertainty. I embrace uncertainty. Every successful trader embraces uncertainty. You have yet to see it that way because it's fearful. That darkness on the hard right edge of that chart, that's uncharted waters. You've never been there before. <laughs> None of us have. That hard right edge right now where every market you're trading, whatever it is, that's all uncharted territory. There are processes, standard operating procedures that you have to know that you are going to lean on. If this happens, I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to turn vengeful and try to get my money back right away. It's not vigilante fucking trading model. All these things maybe haven't been given much thought up until today. And I'm hoping, at least it's been my aim today, to try to put a spotlight on how we are to think about these things and not view them as reasons why not to bother or to be fearful in our attempts in trying to improve. Because that's a lie. That's why they're presented to you as an adversity to talk you out of it. Don't bother trying. It's not worth it. Don't, don't, don't worry about trying to do it. You know, imagine how much better you'll feel if you just live your life, accept the fact that what you have is the best it's going to ever be. At least you have Saturday and Sunday to, to live your life in lack and be content with that, 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 that TV channel that shows those men running around chasing a fucking piece of dead pig skin inflated and getting paid with an industry identity that never pays any income taxes. You're making all these people rich, giving them your fucking time instead of doing the things that can make what they make as a salary and live a short life. You can live a well enriched life, not beating yourself up, not enriching these fucking jokers. And all that time that you have on the weekend that you're giving to these people and advertising revenue by your spectatorship of whatever the fucking shit is that they're doing, you're building a legacy of wealth behind you. So if you do lay down your head prematurely, you have something to leave your children. You have a roadmap for them to follow. Listen, daddy, mommy, whatever it is, I walk this path. I should be an encouragement to you. Do what I did. Learn how I uh, developed and do these types of things. That's how you leave a real legacy. Not going on social media, flaunting, saying you're rich and look where I live and look what I drive and act a fool. Rich overnight type thing, but I've never promised that. I did state that if you slowed your roll, okay, if you went at a little bit more realistic pace and didn't put too much pressure on yourself, look for one good setup. One setup that meets the criteria that you have. Look for it. Frame the risk. Be content with making the amount of money you're aiming for. Once you get it, stop. And then watch the rest of the day. Or don't look at it and go back and look at it later on in the day and back test it. But don't open yourself up to more risk. And last night when he showed me his account, he is up uh, 
25 over twenty five hundred dollars in his top step uh, funded account. When I say funded account, is that really technically correct? Because it says Express at, at the top of the screen when he shows me his screenshots. That's that. Did he call that funded? I don't know. <laughs> All I know is, is he finally got his payout, and it was nothing nefarious on Top Step's part. But uh, apparently, the deal, D E E L, company that was paying out to prop firms, they they had him signed up with that, and for whatever reason, you know, they stopped doing business i guess with all prop funds or firms rather with everything that happened that recent forex company that got caught you know frauding people but the uh the money was sent to him he they asked him to put some paperwork together for him to have his bank information sent and they got it and the very next day he he received his funds yesterday so very thankful for that michael patak um and those of you at top step so I, I talked to him yesterday, him being Cameron. I told him, I said, listen, you should be thinking about just doing one withdrawal a month. Stay on track doing what you're doing and just do one withdrawal per month. And we worked out his bills, you know, all the expenses he likes to you know, see spent on. It's about $900 a month. So $900. I told him, I said, if you take $1,200 out, that kind of offsets the tax and it gives you what you're looking for. So that's like your wage. And everything below that or remaining just helps build the account up. So he's like, well, I was you know, wanting to take you know, a weekly payout. So what do you think about that? I said, I think you should take <laughs> one withdrawal per month. Don't be trying to chase the money. So I think he, he, he feels it now. He's like, wow, this is, you know, this is spendable money. Like this is, I can go out there and spend this. And it's a little, it's different. It's different when you make it yourself. It's not like oh, going out there and winning a, a, a prize or a contest or someone giving it to you at a, a birthday or a Christmas. Um, when you earn it and you did it following a process, it's very rewarding. It's very uh, satisfying. And it's one of those wonderful dopamine drops where you feel like you want to get it again immediately. And that's the problem. That's the problem with this industry. That's the problem with trading because it feels overwhelming to be successful on a very short-term basis. In the beginning, most of you, if you were all being honest, we were all in a room where we could openly talk about what we have and how much money we have. And you were not <laughs> afraid or intimidated by anyone making some kind of snide remark about how broke you are. I, I was broke. I, I was homeless. You know, I, I've, I had those periods in my life where I, I didn't have anything. I had less money than the bank said I should have in the bank account. <laughs> that's, that's where I was. Okay. So, I mean, I, I know what that's like to be broke. And humble beginnings is sometimes one of the best things you could ever come from. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you're talking about your son, Cameron, how's that humble beginnings? He's doing it with his own money. He's walking this walk. And true to form, I mean, as a young male, you know, initially everybody thinks they can do everything when you're young. And sometimes you can pull it off. Long term, probably not. <laughs> and it's just nice to see that because here's what I was going to do. I was going to go out and I wanted to put together a presentation where taking a very small amount of money and I was going to do $1,500. I was going to take $1,500, trade with micro contracts, doing one setup per day. And it would probably take me about a year to do it the way I want to present it because obviously you can see what I did this week. Like I literally slapped the shit out of the market. With a live account, folks. Okay, it's not a fucking demo. But uh, that's still playing around. And I think to myself when I woke up, you probably watched what I did this week and thinking, man, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to trade like ICT doing that. I want to make 
$35,000 in one day. I want to do $60,000 in a week. I want to make $140,000 in five and a half weeks. I want to do that. I want to do those things. I want to sit down with you today and just calmly remind you that what's wrong with making $2,500 in three weeks? Are you doing that right now? How many times have you tried to make money, big money, and you were denied? Maybe you did have a, a win here and win there that made you feel like, okay, I got it figured out. The next trade I'm going to take, I'm going to make this much more. I got a target. I got a money management idea that the aspect of growing to this number, that's the, that's the management program. Not, I got to be around long enough and be able to weather the storm of losing trades because you're new. For the last three weeks, I've sat with my youngest son and I explained to him, I said, listen, when you look at these candlesticks, it doesn't mean anything to you, but I want you to tell me what you think it's going to do, go up or down from where it's at. And we sit with a demo account and we'll push and we'll see if he's right or wrong. And I want him to feel what it feels like to have that feedback of, okay, did what I told him, or not what I told him, it, told, it did what I wanted to see it happen. In the marketplace and i ask him now what does that make you feel like does it feel like you imposed your will on the marketplace like you somehow made that happen or does it make you feel uncomfortable that you thought it was going to do something and it didn't do it and it denied you and it's a worthwhile experience for him because he's a uh, he's 16 years old he's a little bit slower in his development from a, um, a vaccine injury he's not debilitated or anything like that but, he, but he's notably slower than all my boys and we we take our time with him and i want him to see looking at these charts as close as possible and please don't take what i'm about to say out of context because i can't stand when people try to teach it as a video game but i want to inspire him to look at it to have an interest in it because he doesn't have an interest in it 